Uh, one of the things I was wrestling with was I was searching, uh, like I tend to, and, and reading lots of books about Zen and yoga mm-hmm. and just books in general, psychology and whatever I could get my hands on that could have information that's valuable. And I found I was running into areas of how other, at least the people in these books, were articulating things about yoga that I just couldn't, that weren't resonating with me, essentially. Mm. And I was like, if I'm going to be like, if I was, because I was considering my yoga teacher training at the time, and, and I was like, if I'm going in this direction, is that that one direction I should push into? And then do I have to like, how does how do I navigate through all these things that I either agree with or don't agree with? And and so part of how I orient my mushroom trips is I go into it with a list of questions. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> and so I, because I feel like it's, uh, I used to think of it as if I was literally talking to it. Because yeah. there was this like loud voice in my head. Mm-hmm. Um but now I, I don't know if it's not that it gives my own inner compass an amplifier of some kind or mm-hmm. like my conscience, little Jimmy Cricket on my shoulder, you know, mm-hmm. like a megaphone or something. Anyway, so I go into it and I question whatever this thing is. And um, one of my questions was about this. I was like, what do I, how do I, like, where do I go? How, how do I make sense of all these different things? And the response I got was, you're not going to find out who you are in any of these books. There only are going to be little pieces of you. Because yeah, sure. you are someone who's Absolutely. never existed before. And mm-hmm. it's a completely unique situation. And uh, so it was um, relieving. Mushrooms are smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they really nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt so. So that's one thing that stuck with me. Um, and uh, I've since kind of relaxed. And I've just kind of tried to let all these things kind yeah. of interact. Or I try to interact with all these things when I feel... The compelled basically mm. like I, when I pick, when I pick up a guitar when I I mm. only do it when I actually just feel like it and it's kind I of a relief to, eh it's such a relief yeah, yeah the searching stops and it's just just being just being it's yeah. really a relief yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so your story is kind of I think I can ca- kind of relate though yeah because I'm very much the same way like there's always so many things that I want to try that I want to do that I'm interested in mm-hmm. and like forever like you know, I, I still will say to myself, what do you want to do when you grow up? Like, it's like, I've never had that just like, this is the one thing. So, are you guys familiar with Elizabeth Gilbert? Yes. Okay, so she you talks about... Yeah. yeah. So she used to talk about all the time, she used to talk about like, well, just find your passion and follow it. Mm. And now she's totally like, that's BS. Like, <laughs> some people are like, they... They find out early on something yeah. that makes them tick, and then they just they just drill away at it their whole life, and that's their thing. But then some people are more like hummingbirds. It's like maybe they're here for a little while, and maybe they're here for a little while, and then maybe they're here, and maybe they're here, and it's okay. It's a perceived problem that we need to have one passion and do that for our, our whole. It, or if we don't have it, that it's a problem. It, but it's not a problem. It's just like society has made it look like it's a problem or we perceive it as a problem because we see like you know maybe somebody that's a doctor or somebody that's um you know like a rock star or whatever it's like oh I always knew that I wanted to do this and when you're like Mm. you have 50 things in your mind that are like try this and like you're like Jesus what is wrong with me why can't I just like focus on one Mm -hmm. thing but it's like why like you said just relax with that and it'd be like just kind of Okay, like, what kind of lifestyle do you want to have? Think about that. Well, what is, what is, what can I do to, like, financially provide for that lifestyle? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, everything else, just kind of, like, go with it. Like, some things you will, like, you have a job working on roofs that pays your rent and whatever. So that's something that, you know, like, you'll have a job. Yeah. But, you know, all those other things, like, just kind of, like, go with the flow like yeah. you said one day I might feel like playing a guitar and the next day I might feel like going fishing and then I might want to play the drums or like yeah yeah like just be your the hummingbird that you are yeah right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right on. and mine like I that when you say that it's like I like I really I think that's amazing because mine is kind of like boring really like you know compared to the hummingbird so I think the hum, like I would, you know, be a little envious if that's so cool that you can do that. I was like, I'm a teacher. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. 
Mm -hmm. right yeah Mm -hmm. here I am I'm teaching grade one I'm a you know and now I'm a yoga teacher so I think it's I yeah I think it's amazing that there are the hummingbirds that have all these different things to do sure Mm -hmm. right yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, it, I've always uh, been trying to cautious my, caution myself against uh, what I call the grass is always greener syndrome. Um, mm-hmm. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, maybe if, if we do relate on this level, then uh, whenever I've heard that from someone else saying, like, oh, you know, first time I picked up a guitar, I knew it's what I want to do. Like, you listen to the, some of the greatest oh, musicians, and they're just like, they're mm-hmm. doing it for 50 years. And I'd be jealous. I'd be like, well, I have so much doubt about any one thing. Right. I feel like I can't. And so, like, and then you talked about, like, yeah, you know, really feeling that that is not right, um, and uh, then trying to start out like, is that a correct feeling or not, or am I misguided in some way? It's like, but how much, how much experience will you gain by diversifying your um, likes and your experiences mm-hmm. and your like, you know, dabbling in this and dabbling in that and dabbling in that? Like, you're gonna have really well rounded life experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just life experience, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I started to get more concerned with, uh, well, a number of things. Uh, I started seriously thinking about, like, who do I want to be when I'm at the end of this whole journey, you know? And what do I want to be? And and uh, you start to seriously ask and seriously want to know, like, the things that aren't important become obvious. They really do. And then, it, but that requires such a leap of faith, because you can only ask yourself. And so then you have to trust the answer that yourself comes up with, or the other part of yourself that you're mm-hmm. consulting, or whatever is going on in there. Um, and that's that a leap might, of faith that's following that. That change 10 years down the road than it is now. And like, mm-hmm. but I think that's okay. Like we just, we just put so much pressure on ourselves to be, mm-hmm. you know. I think especially like, people maybe going to university especially nowadays oh, with no. just going oh, into gosh. you know indentured servitude basically yeah. with debt and then you know I've spent anywhere from four to eight years going in this direction and now it's I not working that's out. changing a bit mm-hmm. well I think you it's going to have to it, it is because, like I really hope that it is there's I would say the I average people, 18 year old does not know what they want to be doing for the no, no way in hell but there's so much pressure to be like nope you gotta go right into 18, university that's so like, young yeah. think about that holy shit yeah. what do you want to be yeah you see an 18 yeah. year old driving a car you're yeah. like what the hell I know. is that <laughs> I know right like it's terrifying what do you want to be when you grow up mm-hmm. like and you you're know, not I, even and what is fifth. what is a grown up right like I'm yeah. trying 40 this year yeah I feel like it's I don't know. Yeah. What is what is grown up? I don't feel grown up. It's just like uh, I don't know what it is. It's it's um, whatever we are, we aren't static. We're certainly constantly in flux, but then there's some kind of continuity where we feel like I have been on this journey, mm-hmm. and it started back then, and it's I'm here now, and I'm going further forward. So that con- continuous sense of presence that we understand as ourselves but then also all of the change that happens to us and around us mm-hmm. um, how do you, but you can have all that? those sort of experimental and environmental cultural whatever changes in your life consistently but at the same time you can still be very grounded with who exactly you are and as long as that stays the same then I think it's okay if those other things are mm-hmm. happening or changing if you feel as though it helps you grow as a person mm. and you're not hurting anybody else and it makes you feel happy at the moment, then why not? Yeah. So here's another question for you guys. Okay. Uh, um, so if you want to each answer, when was the last time you remember crying tears of joy? Today. Today? Yeah. What was it about, if you don't mind me asking? Um, some, it, somebody sent me a song oh, that's that nice. they said reminded them of me. And I listened to it. I cried a little bit. Hmm. Happy cry. Yeah. Awesome. Mon- I guess Monday night, um, <laughs> Finn, uh, he caught, it's not that great in the outfield. He caught a ball oh. in the outfield, and he got somebody out at second base. Did he? Yeah, he did. Is that, like, the best night of his life? 
best night of his life. Second best night of his life. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, it's the best night of his life to start. To start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so that. Yeah. yeah. I cry a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good with it's that. It's good for you. Yeah, I'm okay. It totally is. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I find it feels a lot like a laugh, like some kind of yeah, release of something. Yeah. Finn will watch me. He's like, are you crying, mommy? I'm like, yeah, I am crying. Like, I cry a lot. It's like, a know, release. Yeah, I'm okay with mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I think that, you know, after, you know, eight years ago when things went off the rails for me, um, I stopped crying for a bit, right? Yeah. I just was like... I stopped and I felt like a bit of a robot. Was it a suppression? It was a suppression. It was medication. It was all of it. Mm. Um, and maybe it was necessary at the time, right? Like mm. things were really, and that that's okay too. But I came to a point where I wanted to feel all the feels again. You know, like I was just like, I am like, I've always been emotional. I've always been a bit anxious. Mm-hmm. It's just knowing that that's all okay to have as long as it's not completely controlling me Mm -hmm. right like as long as I still have control in my life like who's to say it's not okay to just like ball when you're watching a show or cry when your son or you know catches the ball or you get a song to do that's okay Mm -hmm. you know it's being okay with that but yeah there was a time when that wasn't happening you know Mm -hmm. I just found my way back to it yeah what about you when's the last time you happy cried Happy cried. Um, or do you? It happens, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, the other day, uh, I'll shout out to my good friend Peter Hansen, who's been on the podcast, but he's the guy who roofs with us, and he's just one of the, he's seriously an enriching person to have come across. I, I love him so much. And um, the other, so nice. Yeah, 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 he's an amazing guy. Uh, the day is worse when he's not there, for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, he just, we were hanging out at my house, uh, a bunch of us after work and, uh, just having some beer and, and, uh, he, um, had this, uh, email he received from a friend that was rather personal, but, uh, his friend was very well worded and, uh, had been through an awful lot and was, was articulating how much Peter meant to him, uh, and how Peter doesn't mind, <laughs> but he was definitely crying his way through reading the email and he read it to me because he wanted to express that he felt all those things towards me too and then we hugged and we were crying <laughs> oh my that's so god nice. that's so nice i love hearing that especially coming from a guy yeah 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 the, mm-hmm. the new generation of boys i'm trying to raise well, one mm-hmm. yeah well it's even newer even yeah. newer than us yeah. so yeah it's um do you ever it, listen to lewis house podcast no i'm okay. not familiar okay either one should check him out he's very like he's all about like being vulnerable as a man, but he's, you know, like big, strong, statuesque yeah. guy, but he's got that really kind of softer side to him. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. Every man does, but it just was less socially acceptable at some point. Suppressed. Yeah, more just bottled up. It's like mm-hmm. as if we're, like, there are definitely differences between men and women. I oh, yeah. Listen. But Listen. there's, we're more alike than we are different. Mm-hmm. You know, like women need to be strong and tough and formidable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sure. men also need to be tender and sensitive. Like it's just yeah. it's the balance. And the, the yin and the yang. Yeah. Yeah. Back yeah. to that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That seems to be the theme this time around. The yin it and is the, the theme. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I also I, I I remember when it first started to really happen for me uh, when I was coming to class and someone would just be holding us in a warrior or two for what seemed like an insane amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it always seems like that, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, there's always that point of, it's almost like uh, you get into it, it's like, yeah, it feels good and strong at first too when you're first into it and then it just starts to shake and get, and then like the ego you just got from it feeling so strong at first is falling down because it's like, oh God. And, uh, and then, but then over that hump is, is, is the stillness. Mm-hmm. And, um, the instructions I always love are, you know, especially in warrior two is like just taking some of it out of your shoulders and a little bend oh, in nice. the elbows and not wearing it on your face mm-hmm. because your face isn't holding you up. It's, it doesn't need to be doing anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, but I mean, we're, we're very expressive creatures, you know, mm-hmm. by necessity, we're so social. Mm-hmm. So, uh. Are you not eating the apple? What are you actually doing with the apple? I'm gonna eat some of the apple and split some of the apple. 
Okay. Nice. He's sharing the other. He's good. He's got something to cut with his knife. I feel feel like like there's something else going on with the apple. Oh, he took a bite of the apple. Yeah. So far, so...